Okay, welcome back. Um, if you are continuing our regression series, today we're going to talk about residuals in linear regressions. And we're going to stick with our housing data set. There'll be a link below if you want to play with this particular data set. And we're going to stay with a very simple um, one variable linear regression. So I'm going to hold on to the same one we've done in the past. Uh, I'm limiting our total observations to, whoops, to just 500 observations. And we're looking at homes in this data set that have sold for a particular price with a square foot living. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details on how we run our, uh, how we run our regression. Uh, there's another video for that, but let's talk a little bit about residuals and what they mean. So when we talk about residuals, you end up with these observations. In our case, we have 500 observations, and they're all over the place. And then we're going to use our regression line to draw this line of best fit. And the residual value is basically going to be the distance between the observation. This is my residual between the observation and the expected value. So let me put uh, E of X here and then actual X up at the top. And my residual is going to be the actual value X or X sub I minus the expected value for X sub I, right? This is the difference, right? If you're a finance geek, you know that this is what we refer to as alpha. No, do not confuse this alpha with the idea of testing for significance. Um, so if you're a finance person and you're looking for alpha, you're looking for the error or you're looking for the difference, right? And you'll often see or hear residuals described as the error. And it doesn't mean real error. Residuals are kind of like the error. It means the difference between what we would expect, right, and what we actually get. And that's this guy right here, this distance. We expect to get this. We actually get this. And you'll see that word sometimes. Actual value is this one. And this will make more sense in just a second when we look at these houses. First of all, before we continue, let us go and run our regression. Again, if, um, if you don't know how to do this, there are, uh, I've got other videos and I'll link them as well. We run a regular regression. My Y input, my dependent variable, this is the big mistake I made in my other video is my y, my independent is my x. In my case, I'm going to include labels because I've got them in the first deal. And I come up with a regression that looks something like this, right? We're going to ignore this. Um, we have a good variable here. We have significance, right? This is, you know, less than the uh, probability of x. Uh, in this case, is less than 0.05, right? So we have good significance. I'm not going to really worry about that too much. Uh, and from here, we can build out our regression equation. So let's talk about that real quick. My square foot living is my, whoops, my square foot living is my variable. Whoops, that's not working. Where's my draw function? Draw, highlight. My square foot living is my variable of interest. My intercept is my whatever. and I know that my y equals mx plus b. By the way, we don't use y's and x's uh, when we get to uh, real statistics. We use the actual variable. So here, we would actually say the price is equal to beta sub 1. This is my slope, right? And then the variable again, right? So this is square foot living plus beta sub 0. Beta sub 0 is always going to be my constant or you know the place where we cross the y intercept constant we actually call it you know i'm going to call it constant or you can call it the intercept because that's intercept you know uh you'll see that a lot and then the great thing about this is that we now do some plug and play stuff right so let me write this equation again with the actual results price is equal to 
my variable coefficient, right? 145.83 times square foot living plus, and then I grab my variable for the intercept, which I'll do in red here. And that one goes there. 35,391.10, right? And then this guy in its entirety is what we're going to call the regression equation, right? Okay, so now I have this regression equation, and I'm going to use Excel to show you the residual difference in what we mean by that. Or you know what, before I, yeah, we'll do, we'll do it that way. So we go back to house data, and let's remember this, right? Like 145.83 square foot living. Okay, or more to the point, oh my goodness, where's my sample? Here it is. More to the point, let me erase all of this and we'll do it again. Or can I just insert a couple of spaces and scoot everything over? Yeah, that'll work. Let's create a variable here that we're gonna call the expected value. So if my, if my square foot living of this house is 3,130 feet, what should the price be according to my regression? Not according to the actual market, right? Just my regression. Well, this is gonna be my MX plus B equation, which we can fill in from the other page, right? So equals my square foot living, that's B18, I'm gonna hit F4 so I can lock it up, right? Times, you can see my, my equation is getting constructed up here at the top, even as I switch back and forth from one sheet to another, right? I'll go back to my sample. So from this page, I grab the square foot living, right? This is the square foot living. Here, I'm not going to lock it up. I guess I could lock up the column, but I'm not gonna worry about it because this one is going to shift and change as we go down. And then I wanna include my intercept. So I go back to sheet one and I grab the intercept. Again, you can see this up here at the top and then I am gonna hit F4 to lock it up. So in essence, what we have is the coefficient for the variable, the value of the variable, plus the coefficient for the intercept. And it should give me a number that's fairly close to, oh, let me change this to dollars so that it's better. Okay, and it should give me something that's kind of close to here, right? The actual price of this particular house is $835,000. The, act, the expected price of the house is $809,000. Well, what does that mean? It means that there's probably, well, you know what? Let's do it on our chart. Let's do it on our chart, right? There is some house, let's make some space here. There is some house that is worth, that has 3,130 square feet and has a price of $835,000, right? But we expected that price to be 809651 So you show up, you do the thing, you've got the stuff in your hand, and you go to look at the house, and the realtor says, nope, this is actually 835000 And you say, look, I've done my calculations, it's supposed to be 809. And now you start the negotiation process based off of the difference between one and the other, which we were going to call the residual or the residual difference. Uh, you might hear it called the error, the error rate. Not exactly, not, not, not the error rate, but like the error difference, right? And we can calculate that. Okay, we're gonna call this the, let me zoom back in again, so we're all on the same page the um, the uh, difference, but we don't call it the difference, we call it the residual, right? And the residual is going to be the actual value minus the expected value. And that's it. This house to us is $25,000 more. I mean, I, I suppose for practical purposes, you can do it the other way, but this is $25,000 less than the actual price. 
uh, the price is $25,000 more than we expected it to be. And the great thing about Excel or any other statistical program, if you're doing this more scientifically, is that you can just drag it down and do them all in one shot. Personally, I love this bottom right hand little green box you see right here, because if you go over here and give it a little double clickety click click, it will do the into all the observations, right? I guess in this case, I don't have the 500 observations I thought I had, but that's okay. Uh, the point is that we play with it. And then you can do some fancy stuff in Excel and um, you know do some conditional formatting, color scales and what have you, all the other fancy stuff that you want to identify, right? If I was a real estate mogul, I would run this and I would say, hey, look, color code this guy for me. Let's do those color scales again. Uh, let's do it this way, which is, I, I probably want the red, right? Because it stands out. And I would say, hey, wait a minute. This dude is $670,000 more than I expected it to be. I don't like that. I want the deepest blue. This one is $245,000 less than I expected it to be. That one's on sale. And then you got to ask all the other questions, right? Is it because the countertops are broken? It's got a leaky roof. It's got a broken you know, foundation, whatever. And that's where this becomes the standing point to calculate those residuals, right? You can do more stuff with residuals, but that's the short version. I hope that helped. Feel free to check out the other videos that go in depth on how to calculate uh, the actual regression equation.